Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Nuego United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Eric. I am the pastor here at Nuego United Methodist Church. I want to thank you all for joining us on this beautiful Sunday morning, a uh, day before we celebrate Memorial Day, um, a day in which we honor all of those saints who have been called home before us. A uh, couple of announcements to run through this morning. First off, if uh, if you haven't received your newsletter yet, the newsletters are over in the fellowship area. If you could, please go over there and grab grab yours um, and take it with you. Um, so it helps with postage when we have to send out the, the letters a little bit later in the week. When nobody's picked them up, we send them out. And it, if you can grab them now, it'll save on postage for us. Also over in the fellowship area, we have our Kids Day celebration coming up at, down at Brooks Park on June 11th. It goes from noon to 3 o'clock. We have some open spots available for anybody who would like to help out with the booth that we're going to be having down there for the Kids Day event. Um, so if you can come down and help out for like just like a half hour or so, um, we really could use some people at 3 o'clock with helping with tearing down and, and cleaning up too. So um, that's going to be over in the fellowship area. If you could please sign up, see what available times are left. If you could sign up and, and get your name down there so we can make sure it's covered so we don't have – just a few people being down there all day long. We can actually run it in shifts and, and make sure that everybody's getting a good time and then helping the kids in this area see the love that we have to, to share out to them. Um, I'm not sure. Is there any other announcements that we have? Uh, no, not, much going on not much going on this next couple of weeks. So, uh, of course, um, Wired Word is canceled for tomorrow due to the, uh, the, the Memorial holiday. We will be picking back up again next, next week, Monday. There's the red pew pads that are in your pews. If you could sign them, fill them out, and send them down to your neighbor to fill out. That helps us keep track of attendance. And also, if you're new and you're wanting a little bit of information about what we do here at New, uh, New Ego United Methodist Church, then uh, just leave some information there, your uh, contact information and a question, and I will be sure to reach back out to you and get that information out to you as well. Those of you who are joining us from home, when we do our prayers, joys, and concerns, you can always write in the comment section below. Um, and it'll show up on, on Miss Deb's screen, and she will then share your prayer, joy, or concern that we can lift to the Lord for you today as well. And then also today is the last Sunday of the month, which we do our noisy offering. And I'm looking, and I'm only seeing young Mr. Ty here, so we might need a couple of the older kids to maybe help out with noisy offering. Ty's going to get tired running around the place by himself. Uh, today's noisy offering we're collecting for the the uh, Bunga Youth um, Uganda project, this, this uh, youth project going on in, in, in uh, Uganda from my friend John Mugata. Um, we got his pictures. He sent us some pictures. He's also explored out. It's called Gal Set Free. He's helping also um, young women in the area to help with uh, getting the education and getting work in, in, in the area as well. Um, they're also, they've just, he wrote me, we were talking the other day, and he said that they just recently went outside of Uganda to some small villages out in a, around the area where they brought some food and supplies to some of the people uh, in the villages around Uganda as well. So their, their, youth, their, their group is doing wonderful things in Uganda, and they're spreading and doing a great outreach. So um, that's today's noisy, noisy offering. We're helping to uh, take up a collection for John and his, uh, his groups to help continue their, their wonderful work for Christ in, in the Uganda region. That is all I have for this morning's announcements. So if you'll please prepare your hearts for this morning's worship as we listen to this morning's. I'm all messed up right now. <laughs> Prelude. <laughs> I need to prepare my heart. So. Thank you. 
Morning, everyone. Morning. Sounds like you can hear me okay. <laughs> I can hear it coming back. Okay. Would you please all join me in this morning's call to worship? How wonderful it is to be in a dwelling place for God. The refreshing springs of God's love leads and restores us. There is a place here for everyone. No one is turned away. The and the are always welcome in God's house. Praise to God who invites and shelters us all. Praise, Praise to God who heals and sends us forth to serve. Now please join your voices in our opening prayer. With thankful hearts, we pause this day to be reminded of our grandest hope that the calamities, the demands, even the blessings of this world do not have the last word. You are the one <coughs> to come, a ruler of a different kind. Open our hearts to confront challenges and the mystery of the good news. <clears throat> In the name of Jesus Christ, your faithful witness, we pray. Amen. And now, if you would all stand and um, join voices in our first hymn, and it's going to be in the smaller book today, and it is on page 22, 23, and it's, um, they'll know we are Christians by our love. It's also on the screen. <laughs>
Today's scripture reading um, is from Psalms 15, 1 through 5, and in the um, Bibles, our, our church Bibles, that is beyond page 853. Now, that's not right. It's in my Bible on H. <laughs> it's in yours. Apparently, yours is a little different. Yours is on 405. <laughs> so please, um, please follow along if you'd like. Lord, who may dwell in your sanctuary? Who may live on your holy hill? He whose walk is blameless and who does what is righteous, who speaks the truth from his heart and has no slander on his tongue, who does his neighbor no wrong and casts no slur on his fellow man, who despises a vile man but honors those who fear the Lord, who keeps his oath even when it hurts, who lends his money without usury and does not accept a bribe against the innocent. He who does this thing will never be shaken. This is the word of God for the people of God.
All right, I got to catch my breath after that one. All right, now is the time for our children's moments. So if we can have our children, please come forward. Miss Deb has a message. Can we handle that? Yeah. Are you going to talk to me today? Sit right here so everybody can see you. So this weekend's Memorial Weekend, right? What do you think of when we say Memorial Weekend? Do you think hot dog roast? No? I think, oh, I get to go to my camper. Yay, a long weekend. I don't have to work on Monday. You don't have school Monday, right? Does that make you happy? Yeah. yeah. So we have Memorial Weekend or Memorial Day, and we all think it's party time. That's what everybody thinks. That's what the world thinks. It's party time because we don't have to go to work. We don't have to go to school. We can roast hot dogs. I made cinnamon rolls over an open fire last night. They fell off my roasting stick. It didn't work well. Pinterest lies, just so everybody knows. It didn't work well. So I thought today we would talk a little bit about Memorial Day and what it really means. It really means, oh, no, symbols first. I don't know what I'm thinking. I forget things. So we use symbols to remember things. So I have on my flag today, and there's a flag up there, and it's the altar is done in red, white, and blue. And that's because we use symbols to remember that people died to, to make it so that we could roast our cinnamon rolls over the open fire and not have to work on Monday and not have to go to school on Monday and all of those kind of things. And so we sometimes forget that, don't we? But you know what? We have someone else that died a long, long time ago just for us. And that symbol that I use to remember is my bracelet. That says to tell us die. That is a very difficult word. I had to look it up and listen to it on Google over and over. So I think I'm saying it right, but maybe I'm not. That means it is finished. And that's the words that Jesus said when he died on the cross for us. So the symbols that we use for that, right, is that cross up there that doesn't have anything on it because Jesus, when he died, they took him down. And he rose again another day, three days later. And that's why we use Easter and we celebrate Easter. So we have all these symbols to remember these things. That makes it really hard, doesn't it? I brought some other symbols today I'm going to show you real quick. If I can get my bag open. So my grandma loved redbirds, cardinals. So I have a friend here who gave me this beautiful necklace. And it's a sparkly red cardinal. And when I wear that, I remember my grandma. And when I wear this one, this one has dragon. I can't see it with my glasses on, and I don't remember what's in there. It has a cardinal and a dragonfly and a hope sign because my grandma, when she passed away, she had cancer and a heart and a cross. So that helps me remember Jesus died on the cross for me. My grandma died, and she loved me very much. And dragonflies, I don't remember what that's for. I just like dragonflies because they're cool. <laughs> and some churches wear crosses that have a image of Jesus on the cross. I think, and I might be wrong, so somebody might correct me later, but the reason that we don't use the cross all the time with Jesus on it is because we believe Jesus rose again. And he's not on that cross anymore, right? So this weekend is about celebrating and loving the people that passed on before us so that we can choose to worship in our church and we can choose to not go to school on Monday and we can choose not to work on Monday and all that good stuff. But there are other places like where, and I didn't change that screen, oops. Um, the pictures that we saw earlier of, that, of, of John Muguda in Uganda, I never say his name right either. They don't get to choose some of those things. And that's why John's going out into the field that, or into the villages and he's helping them because they don't have the same choices that we have. So today we're going to say a little prayer and then we're going to take up some offering for them so that they can hopefully someday have the same choice that you and I have to Just have a party. Say, yes. Reminder, Jesus died. Three days later, he rose from the dead. But three days ago was Ascension Day. And he rose from the dead. What did he do three days ago? He went up to heaven. 
And that's what we're going to do someday, right? Yes. Awesome. Let's say a prayer. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for us and having him rise again and sit at your side until he comes again to take us to heaven with you. We also thank you for all the people that have gone before us and have passed away fighting for our freedoms and fighting for us to be able to make our own choices in life. We ask that you be with all of those who are still in harm's way and especially with the people in Uganda, <clears throat> in the small villages and stuff, in places where they, the women and children and the handicapped persons don't have as many choices as we have and don't have food. Be with them and help us to be generous in the way that we help them today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. I didn't get anything fun today because I, I don't know. The more of they just doesn't seem like we should be doing smashing eggs, right? So <laughs> let's go do some collecting money. Can you help me do that? All right. Here's a bucket for you, Ty. Right now, Santa, come help us. that you guys are all a good you guys remember how to do this you guys are some great helpers nice job all right tight for you here tight awesome work thank you so much john and the people of uganda will love you for that thank you all right you can go with miss ann now if you want to go downstairs <laughs> little children all the children of the world Red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. All right, now is the time for our prayers, joys, and concerns time. Um, we have uh, basically the only prayer that I was really given to um, this week was uh, from Miss Lois, for Miss Lois Van Dyke. Um, Miss Lois. We got a phone call the other day that from her son, Mark, that Miss Lois wasn't feeling very well. Um, and the next day she got worse, so he took her into the emergency room. However, we haven't heard any updates since then, so we will hopefully get some out to you right away as soon as we hear something from Mark or Lois um, as to how she's doing. And then we'll get something out to you, let you all know how she's doing. But we need prayers for Miss Lois that she can uh, be feeling better and can get back here to start playing organ for us again. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And then I, I was called the other day and then given a message as a reminder from Miss Carol. Um, you all remembered Matthew, um, Carol's grandson that we've been praying for who had, it was leukemia, right? Hodgkin's, Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, well, Matthew went in and had some testing done the other day and has been found to be cancer free. So, yes, so... So we want to continue our prayers for Matthew that he remains cancer free and he wants to thank all of you for your prayers and, and making sure and praying for him and lifting him to the Lord for us. And we will continue to do so. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. That is all I have for prayers this morning. Uh, Miss Deb? Yes, yeah. Um, John, who we are taking a collection for today, is asking us to continue to pray for, for the people of Uganda, and especially those who are in those outer, those outer villages um, outside the city. Um, there's not as much out there for them, so 
they are continuing the struggle. So he's asking for prayers for the, the young women and the children and, and uh, the disabled as well that he's helping in those areas to find them comfort. Um, so yes, and we will continue to pray for John and his all that he's doing over there for, the, for his people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Yes, Miss Deb. Uh, we prayed last week uh, for Miss Deb's friend Frankie, who was out in Colorado on a hiking trip, and he ended up falling 200 feet. Um, and he's he's currently they she believes he's still in a coma, um, and they still have him um, in the coma so he can heal. The family is out there, but we so we need continued prayers for Frankie. That and he's doing much better, she said. But but always, you know, we can always do even better yet with our prayers. So we're going to continue to pray for Frankie uh, and his healing, so that he can get back to to the normal young life that he's currently living. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Yes, Miss Jen. Hmm. And the year party. All mentors and students came. It was a lot of fun. Um, I heard from many teachers the next day that their children came back and told them it was one of the best days of their life. <laughs> I heard some really great stories from mentors as well. So just want to say thank you again to the mentors for partnering with our students this year. And also thank you to Ron Carbonet for uh, stepping up and uh, doing the party for us. He showed up, brought a ton of games, and the kids just loved it. So thank you. Yeah. Yes, Miss Jen is sharing a joy. We had our kids, our kids Hope Mentoring Mentee end of the season party on Thursday, um, and it was a lot of fun. We had all of the mentors and all the mentees were there. Um, we even had a couple of our prayer partners with us that joined us, and, and Ron Pardonet brought all the games and fun activities for the kids, and and uh, Jen said that she heard from the teachers of the students that many of them went back to their classrooms and said this was the funnest day they've had in their entire lives. So, so it's, a, it's a great reward to be able to touch these young lives the way we are and, and to help them in many situations, to let them know that there's others out there who do care for them and love them. So if next year, I, I, I do ask next year, if you could please step up and think about being a mentor for the Kids Hope program next year, because their teachers all season long have been asking, do you have any more mentors? Because we have kids. Um, so if we can think about becoming a mentor in next next year for Kids Hope, then please see Miss Jen um, by, before August. Of, I think we're going to be holding a meeting August. So let her know so she can invite you to the meeting to talk about uh, this coming Kids Hope season. And we're going to continue to pray for the Kids Hope program as well as that continues to touch the lives of our young children in our community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Yes, Ms. Ruth. I would like to state that I've seen on TV where the cemetery of Arlington, they have a flag on every grave, hmm. and it's 2,500 graves, and my husband happens to be one of them. Hmm. They start before it even gets daylight, and the National Guard, and they're all right in precision. Yeah. Uh, Miss Ruth is sharing a joy of our country in the Arlington Cemetery. There's 2,500 soldiers laid to rest in the Arlington Cemetery. Uh, Miss Ruth's husband being one of them. And the National Guard went through and laid a flag on every one of those on every one of those grave sites. Um, was it yesterday? Well, it'll be. Or, It'll be there through the Memorial Day, yeah. So prayers for the National Guard members who are still honoring the, the fallen soldiers. Yeah, it takes a while to get through 2,500 <laughs> sites and uh, placing flags, but they have placed a flag on every site. So, yeah, prayers for the National Guards who are still honoring, prayer for the, the families of those loved ones who are in those places, and the prayers for those who have been laid to rest fighting for our freedom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. All right. Miss Jill, 
Yes, we want continued prayers. Miss Jill is back with us, so we have a joy. We prayed for Miss Jill last week, who ended up in the hospital with the uh, with some water in your heart, right? So con congenitive heart failure going on. Um, she is back with us, and she's she's spunky <laughs> still. <laughs> so it didn't slow her down any. So we want we want to thank God for for making sure that she was able to return to us, and we want to continue prayers that that they can get this under control for Miss Jill, and that she uh, she continues to to be that that light for us as she comes in each and every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. All right. Well, maybe there's a prayer. Oh, Jen, you had one more? Yeah. Yes. Yep. We have, uh, we've had another, another school shooting. Um, so we need prayers for the, the families in Texas who are dealing with the loss of many, many young children um, and teachers, uh, mothers, um, friends as well. Uh, and then also prayers for our country um, with dealing with this. Uh, every time after a school shooting, I can tell you working with the police department here in Nuego, every time after a school shooting, you get a lot of, a lot of kids starting to copycat, seeing you know, their names of individuals being placed up there and they start wanting to start making mischief. Uh, and it creates it creates a world of stress for a lot of our officers and a lot of our teachers across the country as well. So we want to continue prayers for the families that are affected by this latest shooting. And we want to continue to pray for all of those across the nation as they continue to move forward and deal and cope with what's, what's going on in our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. All right. Well, maybe there's a prayer you didn't want to lift. You wanted lifted today, but you didn't really feel the need to share with the congregation at this moment. We will go ahead and give you a moment of silence so that you may lift it to the Lord yourself. Where is the time gone, Lord? It seems as though we were just shoveling snow from walkways and driveways, only preparing plans for rest and recreation, leisure and celebration in the coming summer months. Then suddenly, we are here. We know as we begin to focus more closely on our daily planners that, that time fills up fast with duties, meetings, organizations, beach gatherings, campings and cookouts, just generally getting back into the swing of the things of summer. It's easy for us to get lost in the obligations and to neglect our commitment to you. You have girded us for the journey with your youth, with your truth, giving us armaments of faith. Your beloved son, our savior, Jesus Christ, has poured out blessings upon blessings and his teachings that we might be made whole and be in good and faithful service to you by serving your world. Open our hearts and spirits, Lord to faithful ministries in which we may take part. Let us take the extra steps into the wondrous mission to which you have called each of us to. Heal, restore, and prepare us for service. For we ask this in Jesus' name as we honor him and you by coming together in the prayer that he taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> you know, as... As I was praying about what God would have me cover over the next few weeks, I was impressed with an idea that we should spend some time in what a pastor friend of mine quoted or said while we were out golfing here a little over a week ago, when he said, the little guys, or those, those small books of the Bible that get little or no attention from most pulpits. 
So I came home and started looking at some of those little guys, those little small books in our Bibles that gets very little attention. And I thought, why not? Because there is a ton of truth in these books. Otherwise, God would not have put them in the Bible in the first place, right? So today, we're going to, we're going to look at, a book, at the book of John, 2 John. It's towards the end of your Bible. So over the next few weeks, we're going to, next week, we're going to look at John chapter 3, or excuse me, 3 third, third John. That always confuses me. Then we're going to move on to the book of Jude. And then possibly on to Philemon, and then we'll see where it goes from there if I can find any of those other small books that need some attention from us. The book of 2 John, which, if you're using the Bibles in your pews, can be found on page 908. It is only 13 verses long. Yet, in this short book, there are some powerful truths that are of major importance. And it will do us some good to to kind of take a few moments to look at them. See, my purpose for this morning is to bring home to each of you just, just how important the truth really is and why, and why it must be defended. So let's, let's read the whole book together, shall we? Or, or you can follow along in the Pew Bible, or you can just meditate on the words as I read them to you if you'd like. And hey, you can now get to go out into the world bragging that your pastor can preach cover to cover one book of the Bible in one sermon. That would be something great to brag about over lunch today. Please, if you will, follow along with me as I read 2 John verses 1 through 13 out loud. The elders... To the elect lady and her children, whom I love in truth, and not only I, but also all who have come to know the truth, because of the truth that remains in us and will be with us forever. Grace, mercy, and peace will be with us from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. I was very glad to find some of your children walking in truth and keeping with a command we have received from the Father. So now I urge you, lady, not as if I were writing you a new command, but one we have had from the beginning, that we love one another. And this is love, that we walk according to his commands. This is the command, as you have heard it from the beginning, you must walk in love. Many deceivers have gone out into the world. They do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. This is the deceiver and the antichrist. Watch yourselves so that you don't lose what we have worked for, but you may receive a full reward. Anyone who does not remain in the teaching about Christ, but goes beyond it, does not have God. The one who remains in that teaching, this one has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this, this teaching, do not receive him into your home and don't say welcome to him. For the one who says welcome to him shares in his evil works. Though I have many things to write to you, I don't want to do so with paper and ink. Instead, I hope to be with you and talk face to face so that our joy may be complete. The children of your elect sister send you greetings. Now, in our attempt to get a handle on the importance of truth. I want to cover two main points for us this morning. And the first one, we can, we can triumph in the truth. So why is it important to, or why is it so important? Why is truth so important? Excuse me. I've got new glasses and now they get my eyes kind of funky from time to time. So why is truth so important? You know, there, there is a movement out there in our world right now that says that truth is relative. In other words, what may be true for you may not be true for me. It's called relativism, and it's very, very dangerous. Let me give you an example of, of why this, this type of thinking is so dangerous. You see, we generally believe that, that life is sacred, right? And, and that the weak 
of our society should be protected. Yet there are others out there who believe that the weak are not to be protected, but only exploited for the benefit of the strong. A practical application of this would be a society where if you are ill and recovery looks impractical in the eyes of the, the decision makers, then you will, you will be denied care or maybe even killed outright. For example, children born in China with a medical disorder, if deemed impractical in the eyes of the decision makers of the Chinese government, they will be placed in a room that has come to be known as the dying room. You all know my son, Tuck. With his heart condition, he was deemed impractical. And he was heading for one of those dying rooms. That is until Amy and I pressed for his information. What a fun-loving, energetic, spirit-filled young life that would have just been let go and not even given a chance if God had not motivated us to step in. Another example occurred during World War II where the, the Nazis decided that the Jews and others standing in their way were to be eliminated. See, they were of no use to this super race that they were attempting to establish. So they murdered millions of men, women, and children. But did you know that Stalin of the Soviet Union, who we allied with during World War II, murdered even more people than Hitler did? We cry out against such injustice, yet, yet they say that they have just as much a right to share their viewpoints as we have. The relativists say that, that all truth is equal, yet we shudder, or we should shudder, at what some would consider or call truth, don't we? A number of years ago, an author, Sam Crabtree, met with a couple of young Mormon missionaries. During their time together, Sam asked a question. He says, how do you determine what is, what is true and what is not true? He says, you say your beliefs are true and, and we say ours are. They cannot both be true. So how do you determine what is true? They answered him with, by prayer and the Holy Spirit. Sam replied, he said, I, I believe you pray. But we're coming up with two different answers. What objective standard do you have to determine truth? Well, they had no answer. Let me tell you. The Bible. The Bible has stood the test of time and science. Other books from these other, other groups have not. It's as simple as that. Jesus, Jesus addresses this issue of truth in John chapter 8, 31 and 32. To the Jews who have believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. What sets us free? Opinion? No. Truth shall set you free. I want to be very straightforward here. Many would claim that Christianity is, is true for, for the white man or the American or the non-African or whatever label you want to put in that place. But Jesus says he was the truth. He was the way, the truth, and the life, and that, that no one comes to the Father except through him. Now, folks, either that is true or it is not, but it cannot be one or the other. And it is either true for everybody or it is true for nobody. There is no way around it. There is no room for relativist truth when it comes to the claims of Christ and the scriptures. But here's something else we need to keep in mind. Truth must be spread around so that, so that all may hear it. I heard a speaker say once that, that it is not the truth that sets you free. It is the truth that you know. Well, Jesus said, you know what the truth is, and that truth would set you free. And the truth is that Christ came to save the world by paying the penalty for our sins. However, if someone does not know the truth, 
they cannot act on it. That is why it is important that we take the gospel to everyone that we can, both here and abroad. People around the world are dying without the opportunity to hear the good news of Christ. And they will spend eternity in hell because of it. We need to get the truth out to people. Make no mistake about it. Truth is not relative. It is of the utmost importance. It means the difference between heaven and hell for a good many people. Also, we need to make sure that we pass it on to future generations. You know, in verse 4, John says that, that he has seen some of the people walking in truth, and it gives him great joy. May that be a legacy for us as well, to be known as people who walk in the truth and are passing it down to the next generation. You know, I read a story about a pastor who shared a story about his son. It seems that his son was with him when he was visiting some of his fellow pastors and, and ladies at a, at a meeting. Well, it was close to Christmas, and, and one of the ladies at the, at the meeting walked up to his son and said, boy, I bet you're getting excited for what Santa's going to bring you, huh? The boy replied, Santa is just a lie from Satan. After the kids, the lady was taken back, and after the kids were, were uh, out of the room to go find something to do, the lady looks at the pastor and says, boy, you got your kids brainwashed, don't you? To which the pastor replied, well, if I lied about, uh, lie to them about Santa when they're young, what would they think when I talk to them about God when they get old? He makes a good point, doesn't he? We need to walk in truth so that our children and those we influence will want to, want to walk in it as well. Truth is important. John then goes on to remind, us, remind the people and us about a certain command, the command of love. He says the command is not really a new command. And as a reminder, verses 5 and 6 say, And now, dear lady, I am not, not writing you a new command, but one we have had from the beginning. I ask that we love one another, and this is love, that we walk in obedience to his commands. As you have heard from the beginning, his command is that you walk in love. There's an interesting cycle here. The command is to love, and to love is to obey. So to obey the command is to love, and to love is to obey the command. If you look at the front of your bulletins, there's a diagram that I placed on there for you that kind of gives you the layout of the cycle. Obedience equals love equals obedience. Because obedience leads to love, which then leads to obedience, which is love in the first place. And the idea here is, is that we are to love. Now, if we move on, often the triumph of truth, we take ourselves to the the dangers in deceit. In New Testament times, as in our time, there were traveling philosophers and religious leaders who were, who were a common sight amongst the Christian people. Christian teachers also traveled and, and relayed heavily, relied heavily on, on local believers for support and hospitality. But the readers of 2 John were urged to be discriminating here. See, there were plenty of people who were, who were passing, passing out heresy, heresy and misinformation about Christ. And the people being addressed here were to be very careful not to aid in the spreading of these errors, either by believing in them or by aiding them by showing them hospitality. Now, showing hospitality back then is a little different than just saying hello like today. It generally involved you inviting them into your house and then providing for their needs while they were there doing their work. In 1 John, those who brought truth were, were to be welcomed. But here in 2 John, we are seeing a warning to not do so for the deceivers. But how do we know the difference? How do we know the difference between those who are bringing truth and those who are deceivers? I've got some very important information for you. So you are to really listen. Not just hear me speaking, but to really listen to what I'm saying. 
It is by knowing our scriptures. It is said when the Treasury Department of the federal government trains its agents to, to spot counterfeit bills, they don't give them counterfeit bills to study. They give them real bills. And they search those things over, back, backwards, frontwards, upside down, any way they can to memorize that bill. So that when they do see a duplicate or a counterfeit, it jumps right out to them immediately. When we are familiar with our scriptures, we can, we can learn to spot that, that phony doctrine from a mile away. But the Apostle John gives us a big clue here in verse 7, and that is to know how to test for the truth. Verse 7 says, Many deceivers who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh have gone out into the world. Any such person is the deceiver and the Antichrist. By the way, John is not talking about the Antichrist here that, that will deceive the whole entire world. Because in 1 John, he tells us that there are many Antichrists out there. But here's the test. Ask if they believe that Jesus Christ came in the flesh. Now that seems like a no-brainer to many of us Christians, doesn't it? But let me tell you, you will be surprised by the many answers that you get. Take, for instance, the words of several leaders in our own denomination where they make the claim that Jesus is not the Son of God, the Messiah. He's just a great teacher and a good prophet. See, the issue is the word Christ, which means anointed one or Messiah, or for someone to admit that Jesus is the Christ and that, and that he came in the flesh. It is to admit that Jesus is then who he claimed to be, and therefore we are to believe and obey him. This is not a simple thing for those who oppose the message of the Bible. They may say that Jesus came in the flesh, but, but it is harder for them to say that Jesus Christ came because of that term, Christ. It is also possible that may, they may say the words, but pressing them will bring out the truth. And if they do not believe that Christ came in the flesh, you are not to open your house or your home to them to stay or to work out of. But then the question arises, then what do I do when they come to my door? Well, that's a great question. And there are two main answers to that question. The first is, is to gently tell them that, that you are not willing to talk and that you would appreciate it if they just didn't return. But you are to do this politely yet firmly. The second is to engage in the conversation with them. But you must not attempt this unless you are equipped to discuss their errors and the truth of the scriptures. And it wouldn't hurt if you maybe covered yourself in prayer first. It's not easy to share the truth with, with followers who are followers of false teachings. And it should not be done, it should be done, excuse me, with only great care and great preparation. So how do we do this? Well, let us look at, for a brief moment, how to discuss deception with the deceived. We don't have time to discuss a, a full conversation that would be between you and a, and a cultist, but the, the main issue is preparation. First, once again, by immersing yourself into the scriptures. And second, by learning about the particular groups that, are, that you may encounter in the area you live. After becoming prepared, and then during your conversations, you must follow a regular scriptural principles of speech, such as being gracious, with your speech being seasoned with salt, looking to benefit the person that you're talking with. Your motive should never be to embarrass or to shame someone into giving up and just agreeing with you. They need to see that you do have concern not concern in winning the argument, but concern in winning their soul for Christ. Using the scriptures and relying on the Holy Spirit. But what about not having them in your house, you may be asking. Well, first of all, the idea of having them in your living room to discuss truth is a far cry from putting them up in your house, feeding them, and, and supporting their efforts. You see, I'm not afraid to let someone into my living room. I'm actually hoping that when they enter, they, they feel the love of Christ and the presence of the Holy Spirit there. 
But if you are not fine with them entering into your home, if you're not comfortable with meeting them in your house, then take them to a coffee shop or somewhere else where you can talk to them. But whether you talk to them or not, they need to hear the truth. And if not from you, then from who? It's not something that you do lightly either or thinking that you will finish in just one meeting. It takes time and a commitment to develop a relationship necessary for trust to come around. But I also, I also can tell you that the effort, the effort is well worth it. Well, there you have it. We are to love each other and we are to love truth. The Bible says that Satan has veiled the minds of unbelievers so they do not see the truth. But God, God is powerful. Powerful enough to overcome those barriers. And he's counting on us to get involved and to help that happen. Love each other and love the truth. And what God does as we seek to impact this area with the gospel of eternal life and change lives for Christ. Jesus Christ himself claimed that he is the way, the truth, and the life. And he said that no one can come to the Father except through him. You see, we cannot rely on, on a Joseph Smith or, or, a, or a Charles Russell or a Herbert Armstrong or a Buddha or a Muhammad or any other person claiming to be a prophet of God. Only the Son of God can make us children of God, giving us forgiveness of sin and eternal life. Now, whether you belong to any one of these groups or not, the truth is still the same. Christ paid the penalty for your sins. And it makes heaven possible for each and every one of us. So call on Christ for his forgiveness, trusting in his grace to give, to give you eternal life in heaven from this day forward, turning from your sins, repenting with his help. And may the truth of the word of God burn brightly in your heart as you seek to honor the Lord with your life. Amen. Now is the time for our tithes and offerings. So if the ushers can please prepare to come forward. If uh, you're joining us from home and you would like to offer a tithe or offering, you can mail your tithe or offering to the, the mailing address at the bottom of your screen. Or you can go to our YouTube page, our Facebook page, or nuegoumc.com, where you will find a donation link that you can click on, and it will take you to a secured site. For those offerings that we are receiving here today, if the ushers could please come forward. from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, both creatures here below. Praise Him above, ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Let us pray. God of justice and mercy, 
The temptation is strong to make our gifts to you on Sunday feel as if, if we've done all that is expected. Then wake up on Monday and live like all the rest of the world. Deep in our souls, we, we know that that's not what Christ called us to do. But the safe road is so much easier. God of compassion, embolden us to be involved in some good trouble. Embolden us to stand, stand out against the backdrop of the world that says, take care of your own. Embolden us to use our voices, to speak on behalf of the voiceless, to use our ears to, to hear the discouraged and defeated, and to use our arms to help the weak and the powerless. It is in the name of the one who conquered death that we pray. Amen. Now, if you all please remain standing and join us in our final hymn. It's on page 512 of your hymnals or up on the big screen. It's Stand By Me. And the storms of life raging stand by me. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the world is tossing me like a ship upon the sea. On this Memorial Day, we're going to be going out and sharing the love with our families. Thinking of those who have gone before us, remembering them and all that they've done to make sure we could be the people we are today. Let's try to be the people we are today that we learn from them for those of the next generation. Sharing the love of Christ to each and every one. Amen. on earth and let it begin with me let there be peace on earth the peace that was meant to be with god our creator children all are we let us walk with each other in perfect harmony let peace begin with me, let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow.
to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Amen.